guys welcome back to my channel i hope you had a wonderful holiday season um although it's not officially over yet i know we have new year's eve this sunday here in america um so i hope your christmas is good if you celebrate it or whichever holiday you celebrate um so in today's video i am going to be demonstrating how i created this blurry background and colored pencil I want to talk about the supplies I'm using really quick and for the paper it's Fabriano Artistico Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. I am using my Luminance colored pencils, my Polychromos colored pencils, and also paint thinner to blend out. And in total I used about 20 pencils on this background. Just so you know you don't have to have like 200 color pencils to, re to recreate this. I only used um, 20 and I know for sure the two darker pencils I saved towards the bottom and the end down there. So if you have any questions about the supplies I am using, I will have them linked in the video description below. Um, the paper that is under my hand is glassine. Um, I used to use tracing paper. Um, Lisa Clow recommended the glassine and I have to say I do like the glassine a lot better. And I'm also using um, masking tape to have my um, artwork tape in place. And I really, really like the, um, the masking tape. It just gives you a nice clean edge for when you are completely done working and you have this nice beautiful edge at the bottom of your work. Okay, so on to the tutorial. I originally was going to post this video second, um, but my computer is mad at me for the moment and it basically can't take any more footage. So just so you know, this is 10 and a half hours of footage shrunk down into about 20, 21 minutes. Um, so if you're here, you're making all kinds of doggy noises. Sorry about that. They just love to <laughs> click their little paws when I am trying to work here. Um, so, now I just, I am using a reference photo for this. This one is from um, pixabay.com. I then um, used an app called Enlight and manipulated this. So you are not going to see anything similar to what I'm creating here on the Pixabay website. You might be able to recognize the caribou. Um, but that's pretty much it. I have completely changed all the colors and whatnot for um, my piece. I wanted it to be really blue and really wintry and there's going to be snow, snowflakes and all kinds of stuff in this piece. So what I am doing is laying down my first layers of of color and pigment. There's not a lot of fine detail in here. I'm basically just getting the darks where I want the darks and the lights where I want the lights and just getting enough pigment on the paper to fill in all of the white grain. And as I was trying to explain earlier before my dog walked in, um, so I originally wanted to have the entire piece completed and uploaded so you would have something to reference because um, it's kind of hard to tell that this background is blurry but once I officially have my caribou finished and all the way in there you are going to see how crisp the the caribou also known as the reindeer is going to be compared to the background um so unfortunately I have to do this backwards than what I wanted to because my computer just won't take any more files at the moment and um it's full of 10 hours of footage and it's basically like, hey lady, we can't, we can't hang anymore. So I have to edit this video and then save this video and then use this video in the next video. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I just broke a record for saying video. But anyway, you get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, I was having computer problems, so um, I had to do this video first. And you will see the completed piece in next week's video. Okay, so moving on. And originally in the um, the reference photo for this, it, there was basically a mountain in the background. A really blurry mountain. So, and because I changed the color, it sort of looks like the sky instead of the mountain, which I actually really do like a lot better than the original reference photo. 
the don't get me the reference photo was beautiful um it is a great great reference photo for this caribou okay so anyway getting back to the tutorial here and i am just layering blues on top of blues and grays on top of grays and putting in navies like i'm not putting i'm putting the work in to the background but not the detail if that makes any sense to you whatsoever um my first attempt at a blurry background actually did not go as planned and it was my uh colored pencil tiger piece and i'll have a card pop out and you can check that here and you can basically see how it just came out to be just like ended up looking like a blue background instead of anything blurry at the moment and so um, I basically went in and kind of used that as a stepping stone for this piece because I really, really wanted to um, figure out how to get the blurry effect um, in my colored pencil pieces because it just makes the, the subject pop that much more. Um, and I really wanted to achieve that in my next colored pencil piece, um, which is this one. So um, I am by no means an expert at this, but I do think I have figured out the secret of the blurry backgrounds and I have to say it's you got to put the work in like in all honesty I feel like I 10 hours of work on the background versus I'm gonna guess probably about four on the actual subject itself so um, I felt like I really rushed through um, the background in my tiger piece versus taking the time to actually make the background look good. And um, that that's my basic takeaway from this video is that you really wanna put the time into your backgrounds. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Like I just kind of layered all the blues and took my time like I would with the subject, but I didn't put the detail in. So it was actually really therapeutic. So you were basically just like layering the colors down the way you want them to blur into each other. And another thing with this one is that um, I am not working in ovals really, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm not working in circles. I'm working in kind of long ovals and I'm also going the angle that I want. Like it's kind of going up to the right corner. Like that's where I have all of the, the blurred going. Um, so I have it all kind of tilted to the right, like all my strokes are kind of tilted to the right. So I'm not just sitting there um, using small circles. I'm actually putting the strokes into which way I kind of want this to blur out. I'm sure it's different for different types of blurry backgrounds. But for this instance, like I'm basically using the strokes to show which way I want the motion to go. So I'm just continuing along placing um, the darker blues where I want the darker blues, the lighter where I want the lighter. And I did not leave any areas white on here. Um, they look white because I have contrast like the darker colors next to the lighter colors, but the white areas that look white on this piece um, in the in the background are not white at all they um they either have gray light blue or um a cream color on there i know cream doesn't officially count but mostly it is gray and blue and then i went on top with the luminance white and kind of used the white pencil to blend so it it lightened up the blue and the gray but it's not officially just white that's left there and now I'm working on the in-between the antlers here and in all areas of this background um, that's how I start I I find the darkest spots in that area and I fill those in first with the lighter blue for a base and then I add the darker blues on top and I just keep building and building each section of this paper is going to have about four or five layers on here before I blend out with the color with the um, the paint thinner you'll notice I haven't touched a brush yet so I'm just working on layering and I'm taking my time I'm really spending a lot of time on this background um, this time around 
Okay, so I'm still going to be working, still working, and I'm just slowly building up my values in this area and between the antlers here. And um, there is, like as I stated a minute ago, there is, like this is my first round of four or five layers of, you know, each cut between each color and like just trying to get the values right. So there's about four or five layers on, um, of colored pencil on the paper before I blend. And right now I'm using the gray to kind of keep my white where I want my whites or my lighter values. And, um, you will see that I will be adjusting the color relatively shortly. Um, I didn't really like the shade that it was, so I'm going to be going over it with a, a very bright light blue to kind of adjust the color a little bit. And I'm just going to keep working and working. Like I know that there's not so much verbally to this video, but I figured if you could watch what I'm doing for 20 minutes without me repeating myself for 20 minutes that you kind of kind of understand what I'm saying um, as far as like going slow seems to be a really big key like paying attention to where you want the stuff and actually putting the work into your background um, like it just seems like in my last couple pieces the backgrounds are something that I want to rush through and um, that's not really what's going to be best for my work. Like I've, I'm really liking the way this piece is coming out and it's because I spent so much time on my background. So that is a gigantic piece of advice is to slow down and take your time with your background. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on layering my first layer of colors here and right now I am using a paintbrush and the paint thinner and blending this all out and trying to get that blurred effect and just kind of layering the colors over each other and it's also going to kind of um, lighten up a little bit so I'm going to have to go over this with the same process that I just completed. So we have another round of layering as I'm doing right now. And I'm going in with the dark, which one is this? I think this is the dark. No, this is the middle cobalt blue by the luminance, that first one, and then came in with like a darker ultramarine blue. I'm using that white to blend some of these colors together. And here's that, that light blue pencil I think that I came in with. Might not be that one yet. Kind of figured out right here. Yeah, this is the one, the light blue. Uh, by the luminance that I decided um, I wanted to kind of tint the color to where it was a little bit more bright blue um, so I was able to adjust the color just a smidge to kind of give it kind of like the like a glowy blue effect that I wanted because I really want the uh, the caribou to, to pop out from this background and I am going to be using um, the touch up texture and titanium white from brush and pencil to create snowflakes later on in this piece. So I want the background to be really saturated and just really, I want it to be such a pop of color, but also blurry so it doesn't take the focus off of the caribou. And I'm just going to keep layering and layering. Um, Colored pencil is a very, very slow medium, so if you have not completed um, a piece in colored pencil, I don't recommend you start with this size. I, my first two pieces were 5 by 7s and prior to that I tried to do a piece this big and I had no clue what I was doing 
and like just the white of the paper had totally overwhelmed me so if you are thinking about starting colored pencil I highly recommend that you start with a small five by seven um, just so you can feel like you can complete something you get the hang of the colored pencils and then you can actually put the time that it takes into it and be able to complete a piece and you'll have a general idea of really how slow this medium is to work in it's it's a beautiful result but you definitely have to put the work in to get it to look the way you want to that's definitely for sure sorry about that giggling um it's my son uh, laughing in the background watching his Mickey Mouse and it's been a really challenging voiceover between all the noise going on right now. <laughs> okay so now I am coming in um, with the darker and I'm really upping the contrast in the blurred areas of this piece. Um, trying to uh, make the darks as dark as I can. I need them to be without being too blue splotchy so um I really am happy with how this background turned out so far I'm really excited to see um how the caribou is going to come out against it and I'm really hoping I have a feeling this one is going to be coming out as planned um because I'm I really took time to do composition on this one which is uh something that I am definitely going to be paying attention to in the future and just really working at improving my skills and doing all of the above. So that's what um, I'm focusing on right now is the values of the background and getting the darks dark and the lights light. And I'm just going to keep on filling in this last little bit here. And then... Um, towards the bottom right hand corner it does get a bit darker and I will be adjusting the color from there but you can see what a difference putting in uh, those darker areas makes versus having it all kind of mid-tone um, contrast is very important very important which is something I didn't really know about when I was younger so um, it's been kind of an eye-opening year for me blending out the second layer of layers getting everything all nice and smooth and ready so I can work on my subject and I'm using um, less paint thinner on the second layers or the second <laughs> spreading out of layers and working on all of this here spreading it out so it's all nice and smooth and now I'm working on this bottom little corner here and I use some white um, the white pencil to kind of reserve some of the white that I needed and it's a little bit of a di different texture down here at the bottom and you can see every time I stop moving the pencil I'm like looking at my reference photo trying to make sure I get this right um, so coming in with the lighter layers of the grays and the blues and this corner is going to be um, probably the darkest area like there's going to be bits of bits of the darkest area in this bottom corner and I'm just going to keep layering and layering this is kind of like a good area to kind of see this process on because it's kind of all in this little cluster and you can really see how much pigment I'm putting down on this paper before I even think about blending it out with the paint thinner coming in with that darker pencil to kind of layer in where I want my darks to go and this in the reference photo was the bottom of the mountain so there's a lot more brush and uh, stuff down here but like I said I adjusted the color so it doesn't quite look like a mountain um, kind of looks more like a more like a sky because I have so much blues going on in here and just still and I'm working with a very light hand um, throughout this whole piece you don't want to burnish until your final layers otherwise you will ruin the tooth of your paper and you will not be able to um, the the paper won't take more more layers after that so you won't be able to adjust the colors at all 
Okay, so I'm just gonna keep continuing this process. Then I'm gonna blend this out, and then I'm going to be doing the second layer, layers of layers. <laughs> second layer of layers, I should say, and uh, adjusting the color a little bit up here. Um, there was a couple rough spots that I wanted to smooth out, and then I went over back in with the darker pencil and uh, might have lost a clip there, but just kind of smoothing everything. Oh, nope, I went around with the gray um, luminance colored pencil, um, but I ran out of room on my SD card, so um, that's what I was spreading out there. I went over the entire piece with the gray with the gray pencil, and then I didn't really like that line that was. Um, kind of breaking it up in there so I um, threw some white on top of that to kind of even that out a little bit and then I'm coming back in and upping my contrast and making these darks pretty dark and we will be doing the um, the gray next to kind of you know a lot of it is just really overlapping the colors to where they blend into each other and they you, you really get that blurred effect and I really liked how this came out quite a bit. Still working on the contrast and I'm gonna really stress too, when you're doing something like this, you really want to take your time. And I just switched to my phone here for this part. Um, so I'm blending this out really quickly and then um, that'll be it. All right, so here is the final blurry background uh, part of this tutorial. And um, as I work on the main subject, I will be adjusting the background. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss anything. And make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified for the second part of this video, the whole tutorial as one piece. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.